Welcome to Empowerment Word Church, where we empower people with the Word of God to live, fulfill, and be. Live a life that's pleasing to God. Fulfill the plan of God for your life and be witnesses and ambassadors in the earth for Christ. We are led by pastors Sean and Gwen Edwards. Visit us on the web at empowermentwordchurch.com. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you for the privilege and the honor to be able to stand here and share your word. Oh God, I believe I'm anointed to teach and to preach your word, and I believe the people that are watching, that are listening, the people that are here are anointed to receive your word. I declare on today that your word shall fall on good ground and produce a harvest in the lives of the people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, host ministry. Appreciate y'all so much. I thank God for the few that who have been serving here faithfully. We thank God for all our volunteers. We call them SJs, supplying joints. Amen. We truly believe when every joint supply, the body is built up. Amen. And so part two, as we started this series called um, Reliance, relying on God no matter what. And so I want to title this today as I was looking at this text, and you're familiar with this text, one of my favorite texts. I, I see these brothers who were in a really dark predicament. And so if I wanted to add this, a title on this, because I talked about relying on God last week and this whole thought about relying on God no matter what. You got to rely on God no matter what. So I just want to say this, title this, at midnight, rely on God. Yeah. I'm going to let that ring in your heart. At midnight, rely on God. Amen. You know, initially I was thinking about some midnight madness stuff. I was thinking about the annual event they celebrate when when they have the upcoming college basketball season. And I was thinking about all the activity and the pep rally, they get all hype. And I was thinking about these brothers who had a midnight in their life and, and how initially they were going about doing their business. You got Paul and Silas, they are on their second missionary journey, man, and they have landed in Philippi and getting ready to plant this wonderful church, man. And, and they're sharing the message and they got there and they're met by, uh, as they were on their way to prayer, they were they was met by this young lady who was a fortune teller who began to harass them. As a matter of fact, she didn't harass them for one day. She went several days according to scriptures. But eventually Paul them got fed up with her and rebuked this spirit of divination that was on her, rebuked the spirit on her. And matter of fact, she got delivered by the name of Jesus. And so even in this situation here, all the folks got mad. Her, her, her masters got upset because they was not going to be able to make any more money. They drug Paul and Silas and took them before the magistrates, man, and had all these false claims against them. I'm talking about this darkness. But we got to learn that at midnight, we got to rely on God. We got to trust God at midnight. We got to trust God at midnight because uh, these brothers are falsely accused. The text talks about how they beat Paul and Silas extremely bad, and then they threw him in prison, not knowing that they were Roman soldiers. They thought they were maybe just some Jews, but they, they were Roman citizens, and so they should not have been treated the way they were treated. But sometime when you're just minding your business and you're going on about your regular life and, and you're just doing what God has called you to, be, to do, sometimes things just go south. But the reality is even in this point, we can rely on God. We can rely on God. So I see these brothers that are in prison. They're doing the work of the ministry. They're sharing God's word. And so when I think about this thing here at midnight, rely on God. Because the Bible teaches that in this world, we believers, we're going to experience some pressure. We're going to experience persecution, problems, and challenges. In this journey we call life that, that, that we got going to have some midnights. All of us are going to experience some midnights. I was thinking about this past week, looking at all this insurrection, all this stuff at the Capitol. I mean, it was just a dark, dark day for America. A dark, dark day for citizens, a, a dark, dark day for Christians. But the unfortunate thing is there was a large percentage of people who really support that type of stuff. And so as Christians, man, and you know, where, what, what, what is going on and how should we respond? The reality is the key to respond in the challenging times is, is really determine how we respond at midnight. It's a dark time. So how do you respond? How do you respond when all this stuff is going on, these, these challenges, you, these bad things that are happening? The good news is God reminds us, 
He does. Be of good cheer. God got a sense of humor, man. Take courage. In other words, be confident because why? I've overcome the world and deprived it of its power of harming you. But you know, I was thinking about even in this time, even at midnight, we got to rely on God. In the noonday, we got to rely on God. During the day, we got to rely on God. Anytime, we have to learn how to rely on God. But there is a mindset that you got to embrace. What kind of mindset you have to have? There's a, there is a mindset of winning. Matter of fact, there's a lot of football taking place today. There's a big game taking place tomorrow, Monday, right? I just wonder what the mindset of the players are before a big game. See, when we face life, when we have a midnight, what is your mindset? When the challenges take place in your life, when things just all of a sudden show up, when you are blindsided, all of a sudden, what is the mindset to really navigate through the midnight? You got to make up in your mind, right? You got to make up your mind. You, you, listen, my mind is made up because you have to make your mind up and say things out of your mouth like, I choose to conquer and not be defeated. You got to make up your mind. You got to make up your mind that I choose to be a victor and not a victim. You, you got you to make up your mind. I choose to win and not wonder, right? This, it's, it's a mindset. I, I choose to be a survivor and not a statistic. I, I'm just saying you got to get that kind of mindset for yourself. You choose to be heard and not silent. See, in this particular time, we got to make some noise. Believers got to speak up at midnight, even when it's uncomfortable, even when pressure, things are going on. It's time out for believers to be somewhere and be silent. We've been silent too long. See, the enemy think he has us down, but the reality is you got to respond a certain way. And we're going to see these brothers. These brothers are doing the work of the ministry, man. They've been beaten falsely, falsely accused. They are in prison, extremely uncomfortable. It's just a bad day. How many of you have had a bad day and experienced a bad day? you got to choose to participate and not procrastinate. you got to make up in your mind. You really do. So what's a midnight? When I think about midnights here, I just kind of went there. Uh, it, it, it's a midpoint of night. It's a 12 o'clock at night. It's a time of great darkness, a period uh, of intense darkness, a gloom. I saw intense darkness this week. It's been a gloom, man, this whole week. It, it, really, it really has. As a matter of fact, we have to balance of what we're watching on television, watching so much of that. What's a midnight? It's a difficult experience. Some of us will experience that. Some of you have already experienced a difficult experience, any type of loss or disappointment. Matter of fact, Lady Gwen hit on it. Do you know that this week we had three members who were connected to this church to bury loved ones? Matter of fact, one of them was a member. Three, three people in this one week. So, so Lady Gwen and I had an event Thursday. We had an event, had an event Wednesday at the funeral, Thursday, and then Saturday. And then she said in the car the other day, babe, I've lost four co-workers in five years. And so the reality is these midnights, your midnight can be whatever, whatever that is. Because midnights, man, they, they, it can be in negative emotions that are associated with disappointment. That's the midnight. A very difficult decision, a crossroad. I remember, every, I remember making that decision for my dad when he was in surgery 15 years ago. The doctor said he has a 50% 50, 50 chance of living. I was at a crossroad. That was the midnight for me standing in that hospital, had to make a decision whether or not I let them perform surgery or I let daddy ride it out. That was a midnight for me, but how do you respond? Because their midnights will come. But the reality is there, there is a response and there is a mindset. What does God have to say about when we experience midnights? What does he have to say? Those challenging times. He says, fear not. Why? Because I'm with you. He said, don't be dismayed for I'm your God. I'm going to strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. This is what his word said. I'm going to uphold you with my righteous right hand. He says, I'm going to help you. We got help, y'all. He says, weeping may endure for a night. In other words, for a time period, but joy comes in the morning. I'm so thankful that he said that because these midnights do not supposed to last a long time. A long time. They don't supposed to last. And then he talks about who's going to separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation separate us? Shall distress or persecution or famine or nakedness 
a peril, a sword, as it is written, for, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Oh, that's his mindset. And so when I think about pastor, why these, you know, why do we always have some midnights and things that happen in our life? You know, there's a several reasons I come up. There's a fall of man. How many of y'all know that we live in a fallen society, a fallen world? We do. And that's a part of a curse that came on the earth. I'm talking about it came on the earth on, because of man's disobedience. That's kind of part of it. So you kind of understand that. Oh, well, why is that because of, be, be, because of fall of man? That's one reason. What's another reason I'm thinking about why do we experience midnights? Because we got a real enemy. Somebody said enemy. We got, you got a real enemy in the earth. Where are you going? Because John 10.10 10 says the thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yeah, he, he does. And then when I think about over 2 Peter 5 and 8, it says, be sober, be vigilant, vigilant, vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, that, that's because we got a real enemy, the fall of man. And, and then what about another reason happens because of man's decision to sin? You watch that stuff that took place this week? You saw all that stuff online? It looked like to me a lot of people made some bad decisions. A lot of people made some bad decisions. They chose to be on the other side of the law. They chose to just violate the laws of the land to do whatever they wanted to do. You know, when you're watching that and you're sitting there, man, it just feels bad. But the reality is that, don't be surprised. Why I say that? Man's decisions to disobey has been happening since the existence of time. The same stuff has been happening for hundreds of years. But the reality is going to produce some, some consequences. There are some consequences that comes behind man's decision. But we got to re realize something. At midnight, we got to rely on God. And then there's an attack on your faith. Why did it happen? Because it's an attack on your faith. We have these midnights. Why, why is that? Because when I saw in Luke 21 and 31, but see, Luke 21, 31 and 32, it talked about how the Lord said to Simon, Simon, indeed, that Satan asked for you, that he may shift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith fell of not, right? And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. Satan has asked for some of us. Isn't that strange? You want to just, just see if you really who you say you are. And sometime when these midnight experiences show up, it's a testing of your faith. How many of your faith was tested this week? I mean, when you really think about, well, well, did you have a lot of emotions running right? Did you feel like you wanted to do something or you just wanted to, well, what, what was happening there, right? It, it was just so embarrassing. But how we get through our midnights are greatly determined about how we respond. So some ways to respond. I'm going to the text now. I'm going to read uh, our foundational text when I think about it was Psalms 56 and 11 where it says, In God I put my trust, and I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? In God I put my trust. And then I'm going to Acts chapter 16. I'm just reference maybe six verses of Scripture. I see this story here. And listen how Paul and Silas responded. They were experiencing a midnight. This is encouraging. Here's what the text says. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them, selling there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. Somebody say loose. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Whatever was happening, this guy, he, listen, he understood the consequences if his prisoners got away. He might as well, listen, go ahead and go the easy way out and commit suicide. But listen how Paul responded. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, for we are here. Then he called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought him out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved, you and your household. There's a, so much going on in this text. 
I mean, even prior to that, I see the, 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 the young lady who was a fortune teller delivered. I see a lady who was a businesswoman by the name of Lydia who used to sell purple dye. She, God opened up her arch. She got saved. Now I'm seeing even in this midnight situation, a, a jailer who's going to receive salvation, not only himself, even his whole household. That's the context for the whole text. But I was thinking about how these brothers responded at a very difficult, dark, glooming time in their life. The brother was in prison. How did they respond? The Bible says, they had, listen, how they responded. So I want to tell you what are some ways to respond at midnight, how you need to respond. Respond with prayer and praise. You need to respond with prayer and praise. See, when you saw that, matter of fact, even if you've had a difficult time, a challenging time, you've lost a loved one, matter of fact, if Wednesday events at the Capitol and all that stuff was going on, what believers should have done was start praying. The text said, respond with prayer. I said, respond with prayer and praise because prayer is our communication line. It's how we talk to God. God, we need some help here. They probably was asking God in the cell. I, I, they was probably asking, and, they, and, and they, they dedicated everything to God because they was committed to his work. Father, forgive us. He was like, Father, give us some strength and help us in this moment. They probably was praying, and brothers probably praying, Father, forgive those that's persecuting us. How do you pray for people that's stabbing you in your back? How do you pray for people that are, are doing the wrong things and it seems like it interferes with you? We got to pray for them. Father, you, you use our suffering to reach other folks. I, I'm sure the Bible says these brothers was praying at midnight. They was praying. They was praying. In that situation, Pastor, I don't feel like praying when I'm having a midnight. I don't feel like praying when it seems like stuff is falling apart. Well, that, that's the wrong response. That's the wrong response. And not only that, they said, I said praise. It's what we were created to do. Man, I know, I know this is pushing us. How in the world? Well, matter, matter of fact, how do you respond? Matter of fact, let me go even closer. I get a call this week. I think it was this first part of the week. One of our ministers reached out to us. There was a midnight had shown up. And immediately she responded properly. She immediately said, let's pray. Pray for this. So immediately start praying. Start praying. How we respond at midnight, we start declaring God's word. We start praying. And guess what? Things start shifting. Things start shifting. We got to do that. They're not, they're not only praying, we should be some praising. Thank God. Start praising. I can only imagine the Bible says Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. They were singing hymns. They were singing, right? Singing praises. I can only imagine brothers in jail have been beaten, falsely accused, bad experience. You've, you've been there. You've ever had something happen so bad you just start praising God. Matter, matter of fact, in song, I don't know what them brothers were saying, but even sometimes when things seem like it's just overwhelming, wouldn't it be interesting to respond like, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I'm talking about when stuff is falling down around you. Because here, here's what you got to get from God's vantage point. This is what is expected. Sometimes we got to do unnatural things to experience God supernatural. Oh, you got to get that. You got to get that because our unnatural response really, uh, really solicits God's supernatural power. It really does. In spite of what was allowed to Paul and Silas, they were falsely accused. They were arrested. They were beaten. They were imprisoned. Their response was directed toward God. So you get, you, you, you standing in the emergency room and they've taken your loved one back. You ought to walk the floor and start praying. Uh, you ought to start declaring some things. He's healed, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You, you ought to just start praising God. Next time, when you ever have a midnight, you ought to respond in a very unnatural way because our unnatural response solicits God's supernatural response. Them brothers was in prison. You say, ah, well, what, what happened? Uh, you, you can see what happened. You can see what happened. Not only should we respond with prayer and praise, be a witness in your midnight. Be a witness. You be a witness. You be a witness. 
We all should be witnesses. All this stuff that happened this week, we got to be a witness. We buried some folks this week, we got to be a witness. In other words, let your response bear witness to the confidence that you have in God. How you respond in your midnight. Because when I look at the text in verse 24, the Bible says, but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Watch this. And the prisoners were listening. Oh, my goodness. See, when you experience a midnight, folks watching you. People on your job, your family members, they looking to see how you respond. Well, you ought to open up your mouth and say something and let your prayers be filled with confession of faith. The promises of God. Hallelujah. Be a witness in midnight. Paul and Silas, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they responded because they had connection with the Lord. Not, not realizing that things were going to shift inside of the prison. The Bible said them brothers would start singing and praising God and praying an earth ray came. The presence of the Lord showed up and shook some things. And these brothers was down here, man, and those, those guards, were, that guard was watching and listening. Other prisoners was there. You ought to declare some God things. God, you said you'll never leave me or forsake me. You ought to start reminding God of his word. God, you said nothing can separate me from your love. You ought to start declaring some things. God, you said your grace is sufficient for me. Declaring some things that, God, you said heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will by no means pass away. You got to remind God of his word. And not only that, someone is always listening and watching how you respond at your midnight. Prisoners were listening. Man, they were listening. And not only how you, here's another one, you got to trust God no matter what. <laughs> trust God no matter what. How you respond to trust God no matter what, that's where I'm going with that. In spite of what had happened to those guys, how things look, don't allow your surroundings or your circumstances to cause you to lose your faith. Don't allow that. Don't allow it to cause you to lose your faith because faith is the vehicle that causes God to move into your circumstances. Your faith, your faith alerts God. Paul said God came in the midst of his troubles and his sufferings to strengthen and give courage and boldness. Listen, your faith, it's your faith that gets God's attention, not your whining or your complaining. I noticed in the text, Paul and Silas never whine or complain. And never said, Lord, why you let me get in this? God, why you allow this to happen? Get me out of here. You don't hear any of that in the text at all. It's our faith. God's presence, that earthquake came to encourage them in that situation. See, God will encourage us right in our midst of our midnight. God wants to encourage your heart this morning. Listen, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Your prayers are being answered. Listen, prayers are being answered. Get some freedom. When the brothers in prison, the, 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 the cells opened up, shackles fell off, chains fell off. The Bible, they were loosed. So whatever bondage you can be in, even if you respond properly, you can be loosed. Lady Gwen talked about how she started praising God even in the midst, and she was in pain or experiencing a challenge. But when you go ahead and participate, you can be loose. You can be loose when you respond properly in the midnight. You can be loose. You don't have to stay in, in bondage. Listen, them brother, whoever was in the jail were loose. Because how they responded, in spite of their condition and circumstances, their faith impacted their surroundings. Let your faith impact your surroundings. Let your faith impact your situation. Let your faith do that. Your faithfulness will impact your surroundings because things cannot stay the same if we respond properly. Ah, oh, they can't stay the same. So I got to get through my midnight experience. I got to get through it. I got to get through my midnight experience. God wants you to get through your midnight experience. At midnight, rely on God. So how do you get through it? You got to go through it. I'm going to tell you to recognize that there is light available at midnight. There is light available at midnight. When I saw in John Chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, it says, in him was life. Listen, he says, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. In other words, didn't understand it or overpower it or appropriate it. Listen, 
Recognize that there is light available at midnight. When you've experienced that midnight, there's some light there. The reason Paul and Silas were able to endure their experience was because they had an inner peace. That surpassed all understanding. They, they had an inner joy that would allow them to not allow them to mourn like everybody else did. They relied on God. Listen, they had history with the Lord. They had some history. God, God has shown himself strong in their life. And see, when you have a crisis midnight moment, you ought to rely on your past history with the Lord. Hadn't God brought you out of a thing? Hasn't he kept you? And so when these challenging times show up and all this stuff show up, we have to respond properly. We got to respond. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. There are different type of lights. You heard me say there's headlights to help you navigate on the roads, the traffic lights to help control how traffic moves, the house lights to keep your house lit up at certain times, the street lights so you can navigate on the roads, there's sunlight so it can show you the direction where you're going and let you know whether or not what part of the day is. They even, they even are some fancy restaurant lights, right? But I believe one of the most important ways we first see our way through these particular midnights is be, being connected to that true light. Yeah, you got to be connected to the true light. I'm talking about a light that gives light to every man, every man. A light that healed the blind man. A light that fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. I'm talking about that light that took up the sins upon the world on himself. The light that came to seek and to save that which was lost. That light. And not only that, another thing, how do I get through it? You got to believe God's word. Just believe his word. We got to focus on God's word rather than the events. Focus on God's word rather than the events. The enemy wants you to focus on the loss. Man, I lost my job, man. I just shut down. I, just, I got this bad report. I heard a young lady tell me that she just kind of unplugged. Listen, we got to believe and stand on God's word. I know this. And it, listen, what we saw this week, this insurrection, we got to believe God's word. And his word says something like, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. Seek my face. He said, then I'm going to hear, and then I'm going to heal. I'm going to hear, and I'm going to heal. And I'm going to forgive them for their sins. We need to respond that way in his word. Believe God's word. Not only that, have the right perspective. That's another one. How do I get through it? I got to have the right perspective. You really do, Pastor. I'm talking about I'm in pain. I'm, I, there's a whole lot of trouble going, a whole lot of ill, whole lot of illness. Listen, we got COVID stuff happening, all the illnesses around here. Misery, mistreatment, chaos, torment, destruction is happening. But I'm reminded of the word, so your, your perspective has to be right when you experience a midnight. At midnight, you got to rely on God. In your perspective, your perspective matters. You just can't get in because the text says, for our light affliction, which is but what? For a moment, it's working for us far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Everything that we deal with is temporary, subject to change. But it always depends on your focus. Who's your focus on when your midnight show up? Who's your focus on? Who's your focus on? Because that's key, how you respond when you're at midnight. We got to rely on God. We got to rely on God, have the right perspective. I was thought that was interesting that even in this situation, there was a 60-second turnaround. The Bible says at midnight. It didn't say at 11.59. It didn't say at 12.01. It didn't say a few minutes after midnight. I thought it was interesting it said at midnight. So here's what I believe. I believe in 60 seconds God can change your circumstance. How you respond in 60 seconds. So when a situation come up, the Bible talked about at midnight. So God showed up in 59, 58, 57, and 56, and 55, and things start changing. There's a, there was a great sound that started in the jail. 54 and 53 and 52, and at the time was going out, 40 and 30 and 25 and 20. Time is going down. Things start changing. Great earthquake. 
chains or whatever the situation. So whatever situation you have going on, if you respond properly in 60 seconds, God will turn it around. God will turn it around. God freed these brothers out of prison. Matter, matter of fact, they literally had to apologize. They, the magistrates had to come to them because they realized these was Roman soldiers. We should, Roman citizens, we shouldn't have treated them the way they treated. Because sometimes the Lord would take your enemy and make them your footstool and allow your enemy to come back and apologize to you after they've done everything that you've done. But it all depends on how you respond. Your perspective matter. Your perspective matter. God can turn that thing around in 60 seconds at midnight. Paul and Silas was praying. How you respond when you experience a midnight? Listen, at midnight, we got to rely on God. And my last thought, you got to respond like you already won. You got to respond like you already won. You got to respond like you already got the victory. Now, thanks be unto God who <laughs> always, the Bible says always, the Bible says always leads us in triumph in Christ. Hallelujah. What's your mentality? At midnight. At midnight, we got to rely on God. Uh, we got to rely on God. At midnight. So if you don't learn anything else today, how we respond at midnight matters. Whatever your midnight is, we don't know whatever your midnight, but I know as believers, we got to respond properly. Man, midnights. We thank God for His grace and His mercy. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, some of you are watching us online, and for those that are here, I know it's been challenging. Matter of fact, I sensed it this week. You know, we are living in the land of the free so-called. And there's a, when we saw what we saw this week, it, at the very foundation of what's supposed to be democracy, and it just it was chaos. But the Spirit of the Lord reminded me that even in these moments, see, man will fail you every time. Believers shouldn't have their faith in men because a man will fail you every time. Faith and hope and confidence has to be in Him. And so to see that, man, you have to, so many emotions. But even when you, your emotions are out of control, just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. That's all we feel like praying, just pray. I want to pray for that. We, we have to. Because I truly believe it's the prayers of the righteous that are keeping things stable. I believe if the people stopped praying, we hadn't seen nothing yet. If the people stopped praying, I'm talking about God's people stopped praying. You, 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 think, you think bloodshed and death and all that stuff, man, I'm telling you, we, we have to stay in the gap. See, Paul and Silas had a different revelation. How would, do y'all know that Paul wrote two-thirds of the scriptures? The brother was incarcerated. How in the world can you tell folks why are you in prison? Rejoice! Rejoice! I said, how in the world can a man be in prison, been beat, telling folks to rejoice? Pastor, I don't feel like rejoicing. But when you got a true revelation of who God is and his power and how the circumstances don't change God, we never bring God down to the level of our circumstances. God wasn't surprised about your midnight. He wasn't surprised about the darkness and the gloom in the earth. Man's heart is evil. It's just real talk. We just got to respond properly. So for those who are watching, you've never had an opportunity. This is a great opportunity to receive Christ. All saints are praying. Those that are watching you praying now. We're reaching out to those who might have never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive him now. Just repeat after me, dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he died on the cross for me so I can be right with you. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord 
and my Savior. And I thank you today, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's bless God right there. Come on, come on. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and stand to your feet. Come on and stand to your feet. Amen. We thank God for you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for watching today. We hope this message has been a blessing to you. We would love to connect with you. Follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram at Empowerment Word Church. You can also view this and other messages from Empowerment Word Church on Facebook and YouTube. If you are blessed by this message and would like to support the ministry, simply go to EmpowermentWordChurch.com and select the Give tab at the top of the page. Remember to live, fulfill, and be. And we'll see you next time.